what does Leonardo DiCaprio, Nicolas Cage, Kanye West, and hundreds of thousands of amputees in Sierra Leone have in common? The Blood Diamonds. The year is 1999, and the devastating Sierra Leonean civil war is at its raging peak. The RUF rebels enter the capital city of Freetown and indiscriminately raped, maimed, and murdered women, children, and men of all tribes. According to the new humanitarian IRIN news, cutting off people's limbs, in most cases their hands, was one of the brutal strategies used by members of the Revolutionary United Front to terrify people to support them. Over 32,000 people became war victims and some 27,000 Sierra Leoneans are estimated to have been disabled or have had one or more of their limbs forcefully amputated during the 1991-2002 Civil War. In 2002, as the war ended, the international community becomes aware of the atrocities committed by the rebels with books, movies and songs, all made to highlight the problem of blood diamonds and how they are connected to the rest of the world. This awareness forces the implementation of certain policies to curb the circulation of these so-called blood diamonds with a view to safeguard the lives of children, women, and men in the world's diamonds region. The post-war Sierra Leonean government, as part of the Truth and Reconciliation, made recommendations to empower amputees, other war victims, and their children by giving them certain inalienable rights to education, medical, pension, and other much-needed amenities. The big question is, was this ever done? 20 years on from January 99, Nicole Spencer is undertaking her maiden voyage to Sierra Leone in with Melkush Mission International in a bid to do some fact-finding about the blood diamond victims. Where are they now? For over a decade, Melkosh have been making regular mission trips to support war victims and their children with educational scholarships, food and clothing supplies, provisions of crutches, medicines and specialist medical interventions. And more recently, educational supplies and subventions for over 500 beneficiaries. God now they make the suburb, make other people then come, come, join on with Una. We know they forget Una. So now continue for all God. Now that message no more. And make Una pick it now and focus on them the land book. This is your pension right here. Because when they grow up, they would not forget their parents because they would know that even though um, you were victims of the war, but you did your best for your children. Okay, so invest your time. We will invest in helping them, but you do your bit as well. We are at the Mael Shaka Amputee Camp where we are sponsoring the children of war victims, the war wounded and the war amputees with their school supplies and um, clothing fees for the year. These are the war victims at the camp and we are here to support them and their children so that they can have a better future and is so incredibly important to bring awareness to a group of people who have been neglected and forgotten and have suffered needlessly over the years. And we are very excited to be able to be here with them today to support them and to support their families. I tell my mommy and thank you. We have to make them succeed. We have to give them a good way. Now, I didn't have a but we're not going to talk about Thank you.
for picking and school fish. We thank you. We welcome you for visiting our camps. We know that we have we will seek our interests. We are, although we are victims of the war, we suffered brutally in, in this senseless war in Sierra Leone. But we thank you for thinking of thinking of we so that you help us in educating our children because our children are the future leaders for tomorrow. So we thank you very much. We pray that you came safely, then God will go with you safely. We thank you very much. The aim is to also provide support to 60 war rape victims in the Grafton area of return. Nineteen ninety-eight, we've been there in the village where they call Kwanadugu village. Now Mrs. Feloka with one, they can't tell we say, Una dina, then get the land and don't enter. So from that time, anybody where they meet, then they chop up. Anybody where they meet, then they cut the hand. So untie them head with red, then they come, then they ask. So from there, nine they fire. As the fire nine I fall up. So they left them five. Then they hit me. Then this this mark with this with the escape bullets. Nine can hold me and lose my So they beat me, then tie me. So then five. This one hold me so this one hold me so. So the, the three use me and my waist, then the two use me and front. Close to 2,000 people have benefited from Melco's Mission International subvention in the area of health, education and basic needs in the last 11 years. There is much more to do. Over two decades since our Blood Diamonds beneficiaries become war amputees, war wounded, war rape victims, war widows and war orphans. A great number of war amputees have passed away largely because of impoverished conditions and neglects. Many have survived by begging on the streets of Freetown and their daughters have become prostitutes just to stay alive and be able to provide for their families. I got this problem during war, January 6th, when the rebel captured us. We are raped and they amputated us in the morning. So they said, go to for this anchor. And he said, Lord, we enter in a bush. He is the one that allowed them to go to the bush to be killing people, burning houses, raping, and amputating people. So I was a very little girl. Since then, I found myself inside the bush without no help, no mother, no father, no friend. They was about to kill one man. Then this man ran away. And as soon as he entered the bush road, the man found me. I was bleeding two way. I was raped, I was bleeding, then my hand was building. Um, we are working towards providing subvention for um, children of war victims. I had wanted to come to Sierra Leone from the time that I was in graduate school. I did a tour uh, through different Holocaust sites in Europe in graduate school. I also went to Cambodia and did an independent research study on the genocide there. And something just struck me about what happened here in Sierra Leone and the brutality of all of it. And since then I wanted to come to this country. I wanted to see the people and I wanted to work and give back. Uh, I just didn't know what that would look like. I didn't know who I would come with or what I would do or how I would get here. Uh, but here we are today. We have provided uniform allowance for the children of war amputees, children of war rape victims and children of war wounded and the children of war widows and widowers and uh, we also have also provided school bags, educational materials such as books, pens, pencils, um, everything that a child needs for their education and we have also um, taken on board 10 university students that we will be sponsoring this academic year. It not be easy 
it not be easy at all with me. I be the right letter from one place to another to ask for help. I be the go office to office, like you get somebody where they help me. But it not be so easy for me. I see them. One day, I know, I know even then I'm yours. My mama go and look for me, say somebody they ask for me. I say, now who that? Why can I admit to the mama? And I say, hey, me, you see how you do, now see, you know, bad. Now I say, you don't go to college, now I don't get away, mommy. I say, I don't see from 2015, I don't go to the help me. Now I say, why you save your don't come? Now I say, amen. So you do everything for me, still I go take my results, I can't show them. Now I say, why they give the money, now I go buy form. After I don't buy the form, can't show me them. I they send somebody with you, then go pay you fees. I go show on the form, and send fast off, you know. Now you go do everything for me, now put lock on. Thank you for having me here today and very excited to be able to give you some help for this school year. And these bags came 5,000 miles and when I look at all of you, it was worth bringing them across the ocean to be able to help. And thank you. Thank you for having me. Hey, Pastor Fino, then they are for can give you gifts. We actually that a very good one for this moment. Because now, for I go buy any for not be easy for me now. Then for I go get book and bag and all that in there. This may be where we use her for six months, one year. So we have to tell them plenty thank you for where they don't come. <laughs> inside this bag here, so we get toothpaste, inside toothbrush, this is not deodorant for the rub now you underarm, make the underarm not smell. This is like a brush and mirror. This is not toothpaste. This is a shampoo for your hair. What will they try for doing for introducing her to womanhood? Mona, they take care of herself. We feel fine. This mommy has been the help we. Be the help we. We tell her thank you. The first program will be carried. If they go to the school then, if they give money for let the bikini and buy the uniform. The later now, you go on a McBenter hospital, you they give me medicine to them with the mama all. Today now, you can't give me books there with for buy uniform for the picking there, so we tell and thank you. The quiz is on the FNOM and the FNOM and the You know, get so you know, get nobody with the last time of this support your language. It's been fine. I don't have to buy for no bag for this school. So we tell them plenty to make up the rest of the In August 2018, the new government of Sierra Leone launched President Julius Mother Bill's Free Quality School Education Initiative. Though designed to help many vulnerable communities, it failed to extend to the children of four amputees, the direct victims of Sierra Leone's 10-year civil war, which ended 17 years ago. Um, I would say that um, in as much as the new direction have um, promoted free and quality education. For example, in 2018, I would say 95% of war amputees, war wounded, war victims um, had problems having their children go to government school. One, we, don't, we have insufficient government schools in Sierra Leone. Secondly, the, the children go to schools um, closer to their locality. Many of them were built, um, reset, um, well, the Norwegian Friends of Sierra Leone provided resettlement homes in excluded locations where um, at the time that it was built, there were no access to service. So no government um, schools, no me medical or hospital, not even direct access to the main road. Um, and so, because of the regeneration, a lot of people who built around their locations have now built private schools and the children go there. I think that if you are a human and you have a heart, that what these people have experienced is, there's nothing worse. There, there's just nothing worse than, than what many of these people have experienced. and. Wherever you are living in the Western world or a first world country, no matter what your situation is, 
you can still afford to give. I think part of it is shifting the mindset, not only from thinking, oh, I have to give a lot to have any impact, but also that you don't have enough yourself because I promise if you can afford to live in a first world country like the United States, Canada, Europe, Australia, you can afford to give in a way that is maybe seemingly small, but extremely impactful. Let us look beyond our immediate family. You don't need to wait until you settle you know, all your problems. You know, problems will always you know, be around, you know, but um, we need to look beyond that. You know, whatever little you can do, hmm? you know, to help, you know, someone, please go ahead and do it. Serving humanity is the best investment, you know, one can make here and the hereafter. Sierra Leone's Truth and Reconciliation Commission, TRC, report recommended that reparations be made to the children of war amputees and war wounded in the form of free education. But this was not revisited or addressed when the free and quality education was introduced. Um, some few years ago, the um, NAXA, which is a national action for social change, um, provided reparation and they had told the amputees that it was going to be a one-off reparation and the, most of the war victims had assumed there was going to be a lump sum, a, a significant amount that would be able to give them a life of dignity. Unfortunately, what was received was under $600 dollars at the time per person and that was meant to be one off and it was meant to be a lifetime. Many of these um, war victims are indebted and so <laughs> of course when a lot of people heard that they had received money, those who loaned um, had other loan loaners came asking, calling for funds so for their um, monies and um, really and truly it has not had any significant impact whilst they appreciative that some money had come to them because what they had said that if they had um, really gone against what was provided it would have meant that maybe they would have nothing and they said we're at a point where even if we're thrown a little you know crumbs of bread we will accept but of course um, you know it, it really didn't make much of an impact for them to be able to um, get the right reparations that they deserve as war victims. This new government's failure to include or prioritize the needs of these children in September 2018 opened fresh emotional and psychosocial wounds for the already disadvantaged blood diamond victims who mostly survive by begging on the streets. Many of the amputees as a result of you know, health poverty um, have passed away. There's a high mortality rate among the amputees and I am really um, very concerned that by the time Sierra Leoneans or the government of Sierra Leone sits up to really um, do the needful for the war victims or if the world or the international um, donors out there or international organization come to the spotlight of finding out that truly that these forgotten amputees do need help um, they would not be available um, they would not be around um, I say that they are the endangered human species of the world the much publicized news of Cerulean free education prevented the Melkos Mission International from raising funds to execute their annual educational scholarship program as many donors in the community believed that the government of Sierra Leone will fully deliver the free quality school education initiative its promise to every child. Even after this fax pass was brought to attention to the current Ministry of Education, Honorable Usman Timbo, no help was rendered. Wow, governments after the war, January 6th, they make a camp for win Abadin. Then try. The small way they do, we appreciate. But we still need more from them. If they pray, we are government, not forget disabled they are discounting. But for Melkos Mission International's prompt intervention and timely donations of few individuals and one corporate donor, the children of war victims will have dropped out of school last academic year. After much advocacy on radio, television, 
newspapers and social media outlets about this social injustice. The Ministry of Education has rendered free education to our beneficiaries in 2019 to 2020 academic year. Nevertheless, we have complemented their effort by providing uniform allowance, school bags and educational materials for 558 children of war victims residing in the western rural and urban areas, Mileseka, Potloko, Maburka, Kenima and Lunge. I also would like to say that in the area of free or, or lifetime pensions for those who are elderly and those who are severely war wounded, i.e. those who had both of their limbs cut off, um, no lifetime reparation or no lifetime pension has been provided. In the area of a percentage of every diamond that is, um, you know, um, allocated in Sierra Leone or, um, you know, mined in Sierra Leone, a percentage of that should go to the War Trust. There is um, the former president of Sierra Leone, um, Dr. Honor, well, I would say His Excellency is past now, the late um, Tijan Kaba um, had actually stated that they had had a cabinet, meet, cabinet meeting where they had stated that all war victims should get um, a package that would come from the War Trust and the way that that War Trust would be facilitated is that every diamond that is mined in Sierra Leone and um, a percentage of that would go towards helping the amputees. That has never happened. We've heard of so many diamonds, big huge diamonds, big rocks that have been found in Sierra Leone and not a dime has ever reached the war victims. We also rendered university and college scholarships to our beneficiaries as the free education ceases at secondary school level. Whilst this is a welcome subvention, it is just a pinch of support in comparison to the needs of thousands of blood diamond victims. I'm the kind of person who I, I love to give to those who are suffering. So my initial inclination was to give more to the amputees and to the, the wounded and rape victims. But now I have a better understanding of why we are so focused on education because of how that investment impacts the entire family and the entire community for many years to come. Despite the recommendations made in the report of Sierra Leone Truth and Reconciliation Commission TRC, Sierra Leone has not upheld its responsibility to provide these war victims their basic rights to a life of dignity. Two reparations equating to approximately $1,600 was individually given by the National Association of Social Change and Action NASCA to some war amputees in between 2010 to 2012. A few months ago, I received a call from the executives of the War Amputees and War Wounded Association and they said to me that they found a document that has been under wraps for many years, um, over 10 years. And the late president, His Excellency, Dr. Tijan Kaba had made a proviso of providing reparation packages for war victims. And none of this, even though it had been passed, um, you know, either in parliament or cabinet, ministers had been at the meeting, because this is what the letter stipulates, none of the reparations were implemented. According to the National Association of Amputees and War Wounded, some war amputees and widows did not receive any reparations. Many are aggrieved that the funds given as one lifetime reparation could not sustain them and their families for a year, let alone a lifetime. Uh, the time we, we involved in the war, we let me keep in Abadin free town. We manage life through MSF. So the sooner I repatriate me, now different locations then, life not be very soft again. Because when they get supply again, they can't be getting out of Aberdeen. 
So now, yeah, we fight her hard now for living. According to World Health Organization's latest data published in Sierra Leone 2018, life expectancy in Sierra Leone is 52.5 years for men and 53.8 years for women. The statistics is less for blood diamond victims, as there are high mortality rates prevalent amongst them. This letter was written on the 7th of October 2005 and was written to Al Haji Lamin Jusu Jaka who was the national chairman of Amputee and War Wounded Association Sierra Leone at the time. And um, it goes there, sir, reparation and special fund for war victims. I would like to refer to the invitation to your national consultative conference on reparation and special fund for war victims held at the National Stadium Hostel on Wednesday 14th September 2005 and your letter following the consultative conference dated 16th of September 2005 on the above matter. And this is signed FM Keru, Attorney General and Minister of Justice and it was copied to Honorable Vice President Secretary to the President, the Minister of Education, Science and Technology, the Minister of Agriculture, Forest and Food Security, the Minister of Health and Sanitation, the Minister of Transport and Communication, the Minister of Labor, Inst Industrial Relations and Social Security, the Minister of Trade and Industry, the Minister for Presidential Affairs, and the Commissioner Naksa. Since this letter was found this year, the War Amputees and War um, Wounded as, um, Association, the executives of this association, they have gone to all of these relevant ministries and the ministers had meetings with them to inform them that this letter has been on earth and um, their reparation needs to be exp expedited. They've been told that um, they should try and get a meeting with our um, vice president. Um, um, and unfortunately, they are still waiting to get a meeting with our vice president of Sierra Leone. As I tell you, I said, plastic surgery and I deliver it. Rob and I deliver it. As I see the to say, was a rebel and bound me, and I'm a bound mark. A rob and Adeli, it is seems okay, but not okay. I know for it better fool, I know for angry. For me, it would be um, the, the area that I prioritize is health because where there is life, there is hope, and there's an opportunity to, for people to better themselves. Um, unfortunately, because of the high mortality rates that we ha have had among amputees, even if help and great help do, does come, you know, uh, you know, come for the, the the war victims, we can't help those who have passed away. Life is more difficult for blood diamond victims and their families compared to the average Sierra Leonean living in this West African country. Blood diamond victims will continue to stay in poverty or fall into extreme poverty if intervention is not implemented, thereby creating a vicious web of the underclass. If this neglect continues, they will be extinct by the time Sierra Leone sits up tackle the social injustice. When I asked what their priority is, believe it or not, just like every human being, they said to me, educate our children. Not our welfare, not our health. Educate our children so that when they are educated and are able to have gainful employment, they will remember us in our old age. And that literally just blew me because it just tells you that, you know, having a disability or not, being a war victim or not, they're humans first, they're parents first, and they put the needs of their children first. There is a need to revisit the entire Truth and Reconciliation Commission recommendation and render a redress 
reparation for the amputees to live a life of dignity and to preserve the remaining blood diamond war survivors. They are the true heroes of Sierra Leone having survived the war and Ebola against all odds. There is a great need for the international communities to join hands with Melko's Mission International in a bid to save the lives of a forgotten people and children as it appears that Sierra Leone does not have the resources to help the blood diamond victims. This is a population of people that the majority of the world doesn't know exists. I would argue that many Americans, um, Westerners in general, don't know that Sierra Leone is a country in West Africa. And so there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of education to be done. But these people matter. They feel and think just like the rest of you and I. They feel pain. They feel joy. They feel love. And anyone who has a heart for humanity should definitely consider being involved in what we are doing here in this country. You'll be given to help their children complete their education and change their stories, better their lives. You'll give to elongate the lives of impoverished, disadvantaged and marginalized war victims who um, have not received the deserving reparations that they need. You give because you will be equipping those who have been rejected to, you know, become cornerstones in society. Who knows what would come out of the children that we are educating? They may be the next or the future president of Sierra Leone. The youths, we never know what would come out of them. Give because you care. And I can vouch with 100% certainty that all of the money that is donated to Melkosh Mission International goes directly to the people. I'm watching it happen in real time. We're exchanging dollars and donations for Leones, and we are handing out every last one of them and, and putting those to good use. So 100%. And I don't know that I've ever heard of another organization that does that. It's certainly one thing to make donations to causes like this, but to come out here and see the impact that your donations are having uh, is, is a totally other thing, especially when you are visiting places that in the West we think only exist on movies and television. And so it's been uh, an honor to be here with you, Faith, and with your mom, uh, and with the whole crew who is helping do this amazing work. So thank you. Melkos Mission International is a 501c3 organization registered in the United States and every donation is tax deductible. To know more about this charity or how you can get involved, visit the website www.melkos.org and email info at melkos.org.